So why okay. didn't the Mongols conquer Europe then? Prob were the Pope's letters actually effective? Probably not, right? No. So the, the Pope's basically, the, the, um, the Mongols basically kept essentially demanding his submission. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they believed they, this is where they definitely had uh, Europe wrong. They believed that the Pope had actual power and okay. could, could force the, let's say, the other kings of Europe to, to submit. Um, and so they, they, they constantly asked for that and, uh, of course, never happened. But, yeah, they did, of course, they reached, um, they reached uh, into uh, Croatia even. Yeah. Um, they reached all the way to the Adriatic um, and they uh, had defeated, of course, these uh, um, major European armies at uh, Lignitz and uh, at the Battle of Mohi in Hungary. And so they had no real reason to stop apart from the fact that uh, Ogede, the, the Khan at the time, died. And so they all had to go back for the, for the Kurultai to decide the next ruler. And so this is the most basic explanation of why. Um, there are other factors, of course, things like um, their, their armies were largely, of course, um, based on horses. And so do you need steppe lands, etc. But they also conquered plenty of areas that they didn't, couldn't use their, you know, um, their, their, their horse archers in. So, yeah, it's, it's not a convincing argument in my, in my book. Um, and that seems to be the most, uh, the most straightforward is the, is the best one. <laughs> but how come they didn't come back after the feasting and uh, cho choosing the new Khan, right? Or sorry, Genghis Khan. Yeah, so I mean, there was a sort of yeah. uh, a bit of a lull period um, in, in the, that the fact that Guyuk, who succeeded Ogede, the, the third Khan, only lived for a couple of years. Uh, and then his wife uh, took over and she ruled for a couple of years as well. And so there's this bit of a lull in the 1240s. And then uh, basically what happens is there's a coup and the, the, the descendants of Ogede, who were, had been chosen to rule, are overthrown. And uh, Tolui, Chinggis's youngest son, his eldest son, Monke, becomes the next Khan. And he sort of changes the goals. So he's uh, the one who sends the two... I would say the two biggest uh, invasion groups, and that one of those is to conquer the Song Dynasty in southern China, China, and the other uh, with his brother. Well, both of them are led by his brothers. The other goes west uh, under uh, his brother Hulegu to conquer, in essence, the uh, the assassins, um, the Ismaili assassins mm -hmm. in yeah. the Middle East, and the Caliphate of Baghdad. And so uh, these two things are the sort of big uh, projects. Of, so this is uh, the Monka, infamous Monka's siege name. of Baghdad then? Yes, yeah. Um, and Monka, in fact, dies before, before either of them are, are completed. Um, but those are uh, completed by uh, his, uh, his brothers in the end. But by that point, the Mongol Empire is no longer a united entity. Okay. Um, so it, it dissolves in, in around 1259 when Monka dies. Okay, just going back to Europe, just one last yeah, time. Yeah, sure. Um, I've heard a podcast uh, once, and I don't know if the guy was a historian. I don't think so, but he referenced some historians that allegedly say that Europe was kind of like a third-rate power at the time behind this flourishing Islamic uh, empire, as well as behind, of course, China, and, and that its eventual kind of elevation to the status uh, of a first-rate power like power was possible only because the Mongols have single-handedly conquered and shattered both of these powers. What do you what do you think of that theory? Is that does it make any sense? Or well, I mean, Europe is not a power. That's that's one thing. Okay. Um, Europe. I mean, Europe is incredibly divided at this point. Um, yeah. There's no, you know, the the even of course when Europe becomes powerful, it's individual nations that become quite powerful, right? I mean, they're not doing it together. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, the thing is that you could say, yeah, the Caliphate, for example, which is this great power in, 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 um, yeah, the Abbasid Caliphate, which is ruled for 500 years or so. I mean, the Mongols destroyed that, but it was already a sort of, uh, yeah, a shadow of its former self. Um, and yeah, I mean, calling Europe a, a third, I would say Europe is about a sixth rate power at this point. I mean, you have, you have other, you have many other, uh, many other states. So Ch of course, China is not one, uh, state yeah. at this, this point. There's three states there. Um, in the Middle East, you have, uh, yeah, several states as well. 
um, then the Mamluks appear in Egypt and they're yeah. the, the ones that the Europe. Um, so at some point, basically what happens is that the, the Mongols who went to, uh, to uh, Iran and Iraq and Syria, they create their own state called the Ilkhanate. And uh, their big rivals are the Mamluks in Egypt. And so these are slave uh, soldiers uh, who started a dynasty in the mid uh, 13th century. And they were uh, big rivals. And then uh, the, the Ilkhans begin to uh, try and get Europe to join them to attack the Mamluks. So they are aware, of course, of the previous Crusades, and they know that the that the Europeans, you know, have this sort of religious idea about. Uh -huh. So um, they have good attacking. intelligence. Yes. Um, so they they it never works. It never pans out at all. Um, but yeah, there were these constant letters going back and forth to try and coordinate. Excuse me, uh, to coordinate an attack on the Mamluk state. So yeah, this is when the period of where Europe and uh, and the Ilkhanate are sort of uh, trying to get together uh, to, to to gang up on their enemies, the the Mamluk, the Muslim Mamluks. Yeah, so I mean, I think there there is a um, yeah there is a book, a famous book. Um, uh, I've forgotten his name. He was one of my uh, professors at St Andrews, uh, and it's the medieval making of Europe, and it's the idea that this that, that there is a period where Europe starts to sort of grow up a little bit because of uh, because of yeah less pressure from the east but that's yeah I, I wouldn't say that's super accurate but it, because of course the Ottoman Empire comes in and the Ottomans are yeah the by far the most powerful um, yeah power in uh, in Europe so yeah that that doesn't really pan out in my book um, yeah it's really the discovery of the new world and uh, the resources that that provided and the technology technological advances that happened later that really allow europe uh, european powers to become what they were